Hi everyone, I'm Russell Leidick, and you are watching the Dangerous Fishbowl channel. This is my composition entitled Forest Bubble, which is something of a follow-on to my Jungle Bubble of 2010, hopefully a bit of an improvement. If you want to know all the technical details, look for the video simply entitled Forest Bubble. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the flora and fauna that are present in this particular fishbowl. And yes, this is a bowl. It's not an aquarium. Well, technically, I guess it's an aquarium, but it's a spherical shape. And it's also an eco-aquarium, which means that it has no filtration. I don't use any chemical fertilizers or anything except dechlorinator to dechlorinate the water. So there is a 90 gallon per hour power head in the back, and it's circulating the water. And uh, if, by the way, if you want to know more about eco-aquariums, check out my video entitled Introduction to the eco aquarium. So basically what happens when this uh, water column circulates is of course nutrients and gases and so forth are cycled between the fish and the plants. And so there's a certain uh, natural balance uh, that arises and uh, hopefully can be managed pretty well uh, so that I, I generally don't have to do anything. I mean, I change the water, I don't know, every three months or so. And the main reason I change the water is just because the tannins basically leach out of the wood and, and they make the water a bit brown. So I get poor light penetration a, a, after some point. It's not too bad, but it's a, it's a little bit of a tea color. Uh, so I have to change it for that reason. But otherwise, it's, it's quite uh, in balance. And one of the interesting side effects, by the way, of having a little bit of debris in your water, because I don't have mechanical filtration or any kind of artificial uh, filtration like that, is, is that the fish actually chase the debris all over the place because they think it's food. And I guess some of it actually is edible to them. So there's this, there's this vivacious dynamic that you see just, just watching the aquarium. You can see the fish darting everywhere to and fro, trying to get something to eat. Now, of course, I do feed them, by the way. I, I feed them uh, hikari bloodworms, which are just dried bloodworms. I, I powder them in my fingers because they can't, they're too small. The fish are too small to handle an actual worm. And the reason I use the Hikari ones, I mean, the, the brand doesn't really matter too much to me, but they have extra vitamins and minerals, so I don't actually have to give them flake food, which has all of that naturally in the vegetable matter. Uh, and the reason I don't want to give flake food is, is because of the phosphates uh, primarily, which can really rev up the algae. So I, tr I try to steer clear of that. Um, so you'll notice, by the way, I, I have a bunch of Amano shrimp in here, and they're basically maintaining the tank for me. They're taking care of the algae load. Um, but I still have algae, as you can see right here on the right side of the image. Um, basically, I have uh, what's called blackbeard algae. Now, I, I actually let that grow intentionally. And the reason is because philosophically, and this is, this is where I, one of the few areas, frankly, where I, where I depart from uh, the late Takashi Amano, is I think the optimal amount of, of algae in an aquarium is not zero. Because if you go into any, even a beautiful, pristine uh, riparian or lake environment, uh, in the middle of nowhere, you're still going to find cyanobacteria, you're going to find uh, some kind of uh, hair algae, perhaps, or slime algae or spot algae. Uh, these things are part of the natural environment. And I, I believe they probably serve a purpose, and, and I may not be really aware of what it is, but if it's there in nature, then I want it in my aquarium. Whether, whether I find it particularly beautiful or not, I think actually it looks good as a, as a little moss, you know, when it's not too excessive. But, but I, I want to be as genuine as possible, so that's why I like it. And let's face it, you know, the debris in the water column is also part of that. Uh, but if I were to actually filter out all that debris, the fish would have nothing to chase after, and it would actually be a more boring composition, even though it's more pristine. It's kind of kind of interesting uh, how that dynamic works. But let me just talk about the plants briefly. Okay, so we got a bunch of anubias here. And a uh, little tip getting your anubias started. Uh, Rachel O'Leary says, uh, basically, if you super glue your anubias uh, to the wood, it'll it'll help you get your... Uh, jump start your plant arrangement. I think that's a great advice. So I actually did that. But of course, I used the super glue before I put the fish in because I didn't want to kill them from the chemicals, right? Um, and then this this grass you can see in the foreground is is the famous uh, Echinodurus tenellus that I, I love using. It's just this pygmy chainsaw that runs everywhere. And the long spiraling thing is Cryptocorny balance. And I, and I really love Cryptocorny balance for bowls because it, it has this sort of like I said, it's a spiral, and it, and it just aesthetically fits so well with the spherical geometry. Now, in the lower left, uh, I was told this is Glossus stigma. I basically uh, planted it, and it started to grow, but I don't think it's actually Glossus stigma. I'm not sure what it is, but it's sort of carpeting, and it's sort of trying to grow a bit taller. Anyway, it just looks nice. Uh, straight in the center toward the bottom, that's Christmas moss. Then way up top, like uh, on the top of the driftwood up there, that is Fissidens fox. Uh, the, uh, the blackbeards kind of got to it a little bit. I hope the shrimp can fix that. But Fissidens fox is this, is this very small variety of Fissidens moss, and it grows very, very slowly in my tank. 
but I like it. It's kind of cool. I, I thought I'd keep it there. And yes, I, I started it off with super glue because otherwise it's just, it's too hard to affix with threads. Um, there is, by the way, an Indian puffer in here and uh, Indian pea puffer. I love Indian pea puffers because unlike most puffers, they're not particularly aggressive and they can live uh, in you know, regular fresh water. They don't need saline like most other puffers and they do eat the small snails. So that helps to keep my pond snails down. I still do have a few pond snails and sometimes I have to fish out a few of them, but <clears throat> generally the problem isn't too bad because my pea puffer keeps it in check. So, you know, so there's a, there's a balance here. And sometimes the balance gets a little bit out of kilter. Like I'll have to add another fish from a, uh, another shrimp from another tank to eat more of the algae. Or if the shrimp are looking hungry, then I throw one in a tank that has more of an algae problem. So it, it is a little bit of give and take. It is a bit dynamic. Uh, but all in all, uh, it's pretty much in balance. And, and frankly, I do very, very little. Um, I just love to enjoy it and watch the dynamics that are happening. I hope you enjoy it too. Thanks for watching.